been a while, hasn't it? Stage 5 can only be described as a gauntlet. Every challenge at this level is enemy-based. There's not a single platforming challenge to be had in the entire thing. I probably shouldn't have picked up that holy water. My original plan was to go through the game uh, with just the triple crosses. But, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've played. And I completely forgot what my original plan was, so holy water it is. And it's actually kind of interesting. Holy water is much better for this stage than it is for the next one. Mainly because uh, you can use it both in, on this stage's new enemies to defeat them with great ease, and you can also use them to stunlock the boss without uh, ever having to actually fight him. This level is Death's Laboratory, so uh, you might be able to guess that the boss here is Death. But uh, if you're not, stay tuned at the end. I am going to cheese him, since I have the holy water. But I went back and I did another recording of how to fight him properly, so look forward to that. I'm actually a really big fan of this particular segment. The combination of the red skeletons and the fleamen is actually a considerable threat. You have skeletons closing in on you from either side, and you also know that you have to get rid of the fleamen immediately. You can't just turn around and whip the skeleton sound, because then the fleamen will hit you in the back. So it involves precise timing and aiming, and that's something that is good for a hard game. The new enemies in this level are the Axe Armors. They're a staple of the Castlevania series, and uh, they also enjoy sometimes just vanishing into the Aether like that one. Of course, it's not always fun in games when you deal with Axe Armors at the edges of reality. This one, I tried to get him caught in a holy water uh, burst, but it didn't quite work. And now he's traveling back and forth between life and death. And apparently being you know, healed every few times he comes in and off the screen. Eventually he goes down, though. It uh, takes about six whip hits to uh, take that guy down. And one of the reasons why you might want the holy water instead of the cross in this level is because the holy water, if you draw a axe armor into it, uh, will kill them if they're in it for the entire duration of the flame whereas a cross will just bounce off and return to you. Now I picked up the double shot there, and there is an upcoming triple shot. So by the time I reach the boss, assuming you don't die, you will have the opportunity to basically just cheese him. And I can't blame anybody for doing it because death is really hard. Now normally the triple shot is supposed to drop from that wall I began opening before throwing the holy water down at that candle. But I had also killed enough enemies so that a triple shot uh, appeared in the candle. Now, if I hadn't have jumped down to get it, it would have been gone. So, I had to abort. Now, one interesting thing is that uh, the skeletons are programmed so that they can never really just stand where you are the entire time, which means that you can draw them back and forth before going down the stairs to avoid them. What I discovered there, though, was that you can't throw an item uh, to the right while you're on the staircase, because you have to press up and B to throw a sub-weapon, and if you press up while you're on a staircase, you automatically go up. Not that all staircases go up to the left, but in that particular case, there was no way I was going to get that skeleton, so I had to draw them off sides. And that is probably the most meaningless invincibility potion I've ever picked up. I'd much rather have it up here. This is the final gauntlet up until the boss. You've got Medusa heads coming from both directions. Uh, you've got axe armors. There is a distinct danger that you might accidentally pick up the knife a bit later on in the hallway, which would be just an absolute disaster. And you can see there that if you throw your holy water correctly, you'll keep an axe armor completely pinned down and we'll kill him. That can try to trick me. Try to put, you know, the knife along with a bag of money, but I'll have none of that. And speaking of things that I will have none of, I will have none of Death's shenanigans. Oh, how the mighty have fallen into some fire that I put there. And that concludes Stage 5.
But you know, I can't just leave it at that. You didn't get to see any of Death's fun tricks. So behold, Death in all his glory. The thing that makes him so nasty are the sides. Uh, they can appear anywhere on the screen. There can be up to four of them on the screen at the same time, so it's important to keep clearing them out. When there's only three, there's a fine chance that you might be able to, you know, avoid them. But once you get to four, they can come at you from every direction, or every direction that you're capable of going, and it can be a real pain in the ass. As you can see, I barely made it out of this fight. But that's how you fight death, you know, if you're not a cheating bastard.